After a little over eight years with our Traeger, it was showing signs of failure. So, after a little bit of research, we decided what we wanted to replace it with. And that's a Yoder. It's made in the USA. Just like me! We're gonna do our best to not turn this into a video of trashing the Traeger because it served us pretty well for a lot of years. But some of its shortcomings um, started to be a real problem for us. But these guys right here build a serious pellet smoker. It's much heavier and it's about the same price. Actually, it's the exact same price as the top of the line Timberline grill. So why not go with something a little heavier? And I got a buddy that's had one for about a year and he's loving it. I thought it was pretty cool on the end of the box they just say turn it from horizontal to vertical open it up and there's your parts um basically all we're gonna have to do is put it on its cart now they do offer a competition cart for these which costs i want to say about six hundred dollars more uh, than using the standard legs which those are for guys that are probably rolling it up in a trailer and out into uh well i don't know to places where they have competitions let's get to unboxing this bad boy First impression, every single component of this thing weighs a lot. I'm willing to bet that just that shelf that goes along the front weighs at least 20 pounds. The side shelf probably weighs 12 to 15 pounds. And it's heavy duty stainless steel. So honestly, I'm extremely impressed with the build quality of these materials so far. There's our 335 pound pellet smoker. Now outside of its weight, which is a significant difference between the Traeger, I also wanted to show you some of the really cool features that this Yoder has that are, in my opinion, they're major selling points. Some of these don't seem so important if you haven't had a pellet grill and went through some of the struggles, but once you've had one, these things make, uh, they make a lot of sense. So you can pull this lever. And that should allow the heat to be equal all the way across the grilling surface. Of course, the handle's not in your way because they provide you with this side rack, which is very heavy. Not everyone gives you these racks when you buy a grill. Also notice inside, outside, like I said, the diffuser, which allows you to concentrate the heat right here if you want to turn it up to 700 degrees, which it's capable of. Now to check out this firebox, this is really awesome. This is a heavy duty stainless insert. Not what you'll find on most uh, of the other pellet grills. Also, that ceramic starter right there. 
Now, I've been through over an eight year span, probably three or four igniters uh, in my Traeger. And they're a real pain in the butt to change out. All of the new Yoders come with this drip tray, which has, or the heat diffuser, which has an access door. So you can remove this and reach right in there and clean that firebox out, which is super simple. Uh, one of the other really cool design features that you'll recognize as beneficial is in this hopper, that auger is only four or five inches long at most, and it drops the pellets immediately down into the firebox, which is at least about a six inch distance there. Now, some people like to change out the types of pellets or the flavors to uh, something different based on what kind of meat they're smoking. And that's kind of a pain in the butt if your auger is 10 to 14 inches long and it has pellets filling that whole thing up. Also, if you ever accidentally let it run out of pellets, which I may or may not have done four times, it takes a long time for that auger to feed those pellets to the firebox where they're gonna light. Whereas with the Yoder, you're almost instantaneously dropping it from the uh, hopper into the firebox. I only purchased, for now, one accessories with the Yoder. I thought this thing was worth it because I saw a buddy of mine's Yoder and it did have a little bit of the oil drippings uh, where the door closes, which they've installed this drip rail to sort of mitigate that. So when you close it, the, the idea is it'll deflect that grease back into uh, the drip tray or the diffuser. This tray was 80 bucks. It's stainless. It has the little felt pads there to sort of hold it off of the finish of your grill. And it quite literally just hooks, hard to do one-handed, just hooks right on the front. Also the smokestack doesn't have the hat on the top, which basically just collects grease and then drips down on the floor all around your grill. So this guy can rest in this position if you're putting a cover on it or if you for some reason leave this sitting out in the weather and then you can just rotate it up when you're ready to cook and there you go i guess the unboxing wouldn't be complete until you showed sort of more of the cool stuff i kind of like having this reference chart right here i keep one on the side of my refrigerator in the kitchen just as kind of a reminder little quick tips there it's really handy to have also power cord is just universal so if you ever do tear it up you don't have to worry about rewiring one directly to the circuit board or the power um, supply this cool little box that comes with it not one but two meat probes which is nice i love that it comes with a can of touch-up paint that's pretty handy and then a cute little bucket. Give me the bucket. With the Yoder Smokers logo on it. Couple of stickers. Everybody loves that. Spare fuse. And then I dropped nothing but cardboard. All right, so we're out here. We got it fully assembled and all the stuff snugged up. This is our outgoing little Tex who served us well over the years. Um, I upgraded the controller and had the meat probes and all that stuff to try to make it last and do as much as I could. But it ain't no Yoder. It didn't cost like one either. I wanna say at the time that one was like seven or $800 retail though, which uh, was definitely not cheap. That's a 2011 model uh, for reference. So anyway, this is how this is supposed to work according to Yoder get some of these pellets i've got all this open so you can drop a few into this firebox then you hit the power button apparently it works you guys are seeing it for the first time that i am that's really hard to read and now we're going to press the start button it says heat up. Now, 
I don't think they recommend doing it this way. They want you to cover everything up, but apparently it's only supposed to take a couple of minutes, three minutes maybe. And that igniter is supposed to run for four minutes uh, when you power this thing on. Alright, so that's how long it took for the first pellets to fall. Which is kind of impressive because all I did was pour it in the hopper. That just shows that short length of auger that we talked about. Whereas the Traeger, uh, the chances are you'd go through a couple of heat cycles or startup cycles before there would be enough pellets make it all the way through that auger and fall into the firebox. Whereas it didn't take but a number of seconds for them to make it in the yoder and fall into this firebox. We have smoke and there's fire. So we're gonna put that in place. Close the lid. And according to the manual, your first startup, you should do it the way we showed you and then let it burn at 350 for I don't know, like an hour or something to cook off all those oils and stuff before you put food on it. Also mentions uh, only use food grade pellets because they do sell heating pellets, which I use in my house. And I've used the heating pellets in my um, pellet grills before. So anyway, we're going to get this thing rocking. And uh, as you saw, it starts. It's brand new. We'll cook something in the next few days and maybe do a follow-up video. But I have a feeling this is probably long enough. So that's it. And that's all. Thanks for watching, y'all. We'll see you later. It's all finished seasoning, so doing the power off, cool down situation. By the way, I thought this was awesome. You see it burning in there?